Cape Elizabeth standards for wetlands alteration. Um, the town does not see fit on other single family lots to regulate um, the alignment or width of driveways, and it seems inappropriate to me to take that extra step at this well, point. Well, I'm sorry that you feel that it's uh, inappropriate, but um, we are concerned with the, the health, safety, and welfare of the people of Cape Elizabeth. So obviously, like parents, we will bring up these things. I think, I, the issue, I think the issue here relates to an 800 foot driveway, which is a bit unusual, with a bridge in the middle of it, which is a bit unusual. So uh, I would tend to agree with you if it, was a, if it was a 15 foot driveway into a garage, I certainly wouldn't want the police and fire chief to review it. Now, I'm sure Mr. Lee is, here is, is a minor road. I'm huh? sure Mr. Lee doesn't want his house to burn down once we get a bill either. So right, absolutely. Right. This like, is for Mr. Lee's benefit. That's right. He would like the fire engine to make it fire, fire truck accessible. Good. Okay. Thank you. Joy. Go Five ahead, reason. Steve. Okay. Deed ordered that the planning board finds that the driveway, which is within 100 feet of an identified wetland, and is proposed by Bill Lee on lot number seven of the Dyer Pond Road subdivision meets the wetland alteration criteria of section 19-3-9 of the zoning ordinance and therefore meets the condition of approval regarding said wetlands alterations for the Dyer Pond Road subdivision subject to the, uh, subject to the following condition um, that the um, 800 foot, approximately 800 foot driveway be reviewed and approved by the police chief and fire chief regarding emergency vehicle access. Great. Is anyone, will anyone so move it? So <laughs> Ivan, seconded by Alice. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Well, we certainly wish you well with this project. It sounds like a beautiful one, and enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Uh, now, under new business, uh, the Spurwink Professional Building at 155 Spurwink Avenue, a request for a zoning ordinance text change or a zone change, section 19-4-9. Is there a representative here? Yes. I think I'm it. I'm Wynn Briggs. I'm one of the owners of the property. And I thank you for the opportunity to catch you this nice warm evening. Uh, our concern, let me go to my notes so I don't forget anything. Our property is the uh, Spurrink Medical Building. Our ownership is known as the Cape Elizabeth Professional uh, Realty Trust. We've owned this building uh, since we were at this planning board uh, some 18, 17 years ago. Uh, the, uh, in June, we presented an appeal to the uh, Zoning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, requesting a variance in the use of the property to permit a vacant suite of offices to be occupied by a professional other than medical dental. On the grounds that we had made reasonable attempts to rent this to a clinical type person and had failed to do so, and we were sustaining some economic hardship, better known as keeping to putting money in the building. Uh, the owners uh, are now presenting to the planning board uh, three alternatives, which uh, I don't know if that's a common thing to happen or not, but we're presenting three alternatives, proposals for amendments to the zoning ordinance into, uh, in order to establish this uh, desired result. Now, we've, we think that proposal two is our preferential uh, proposal. We will present that as a, an initial uh, consideration. This proposal... Uh, by this proposal, the permitted uses in Residence C District would be expanded to include, quote, professional offices, close quotes, subject to the approval of the Zoning Board and Site Plan Review and Approval by the Planning Board. This proposal seems to us to do the least violence to the existing structure of the Zoning Ordinance and would permit reasonable limitations to be applied to any proposed office use when an application is submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Should this uh, 
Proposal 2, our first proposal, not find favor. Then we have a second priority, which would be to amend the zoning map to change the property at 155 Sperling Avenue from a residence C district to a business C district. Business C is interesting in that it is provided for in Section 1926 of the Zoning Ordinance, but there is no such area in the community as of this time. That section, 1926 of the Zoning Ordinance, would allow business, professional, research, or government offices to apply subject to satisfying seven criteria, which are listed in the ordinance, which I won't review unless you'd like me to review them. Finally, if these first two proposals seem inappropriate, we might address the issue of what the Zoning Board of Appeals can do within their capabilities, and that would be to alter the Section 1913-2 be expanded to include consideration for variance of use, which is not currently in the Zoning Ordinance. The variance of use to include those uses which are, excuse me, variance of use not to include those uses which are currently specifically prohibited, and that goes through the abattoir and trailers and sawmills and other things. Obviously, such an amendment would have to necessarily, we would have to necessarily, if that amendment were changed, to allow the Board of Zoning Appeals to address the issue of use. Should that change, then we would necessarily have to go back to that board and present our point there. I should make it clear that we have no indication or no desire to change the building externally or significantly internally. We might put up a semi-wall, depending on the tenant's wish, but we have no intention of changing the exterior, the surrounding, the parking. It looks like we have approximately 66 parking slots there. We've never drawn them because we've never had to. We've never had a full parking lot. It has been estimated by a traffic evaluator that the medical office in the rush hour traffic, which would presumably be the heavier traffic time, that a medical office of about 10,000 square feet, which is the cumulative area in our building, would have about 36 cars coming in and out in the 4 to 6 p.m. time, and that if it were general business, it would be about 20 percent less than that at 29 cars. We feel that any business or professional unit that would be there would probably have less traffic than our facility. Our facility might as it currently exists. That's my little speech. The proposal, too, does refer to changing, inserting a phrase, professional office, into section 1923B. I'd be happy to answer questions or give comments or whatever. Thank you, Dr. Briggs. Steve, could you fill us in? I'm a little confused about this. So are we. I think what normally happens is an applicant, when they're proposing a zoning ordinance text change or a zone change, which is really a change to the zoning map itself, pretty much comes in with their desired kind of approach, and they go to it, and there may be a lot of issues that kind of swirl around the issue, but they're relatively specific. You can hone them down to one proposal. The applicant here has several different alternatives open to him, to them, actually, and has kind of laid them all out. There's probably three of a half a dozen alternatives that really could be done. And we've talked a couple times before, and I know it's the board's preference to really kind of have an applicant present their preferred alternative. In this case, I surmise that the applicant didn't feel like there was any one choice. They wanted to provide all three. That's kind of the overview. If you have any specific questions, I can answer those. I think it would seem the simpler thing to us to change that residential C thing 
to insert the professional office, rooming house, professional office, medical, dental, clinic, subject to the approval, et cetera. Madam Chair, can I ask a question? Um, what is your understanding of what professional office could include? Um, I went through the yellow pages to see what I might consider to be a professional <laughs> office. And it seemed um, to, to me, my, my list includes things such as engineers, architects, lawyers, mm. accountants, real estate agents, which is what raised this issue, which is no longer an issue for us specifically, but uh, real estate agents, um, management consultants, mm. that type of professional. Would hairdresser or barber? Uh, we feel that would not be. Okay. Um, and th that's one of the issues of, of definition. Should yeah. indeed there be s significant conditions applied to this that would limit mm. the professionals that would be considered professionals because a hairdresser considers himself or herself to be a professional. Mm. I, I would think we'd have to have yeah. a definition in our zoning ordinance to accommodate that term just so that we are on a clear understanding as yeah. to what mm. uh, otherwise I think we run into a Pandora's box. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Now, Steve, on the zone change uh, checklist that I have before me, mm -hmm. what is left out, okay. if anything? The I just did one checklist, but again, you know, there could be three, and, and the zone change checklist is the most all-inclusive for, zone, for zoning ordinance text changes. It gets confusing, but the text changes alone would just involve some of these. But for zoning map changes, there's a very explicit list of things that have to be submitted. So I went through that since one of the proposals was to, to do that, to change it from the, the one specific lot from RC, an RC designation, to a BC, a business C designation. Um, so in terms of that, I just went down and, and you know, the basic information is there relatively, uh, relatively clearly. But if you want to follow along on, on the back of the zoning ordinance, I think it's the very last page, on page 52, you can see what's required relatively, you know, well, uh, well described, at least for the first seven items, which is a map showing existing and proposed zone lines. Um, yeah, the, the partial on 1B is relatively minor. They describe it, they don't really show it. Mm -hmm. I think we all know where it is. Um, everything else seems to be okay down until number six, where um, one of the requirements is that a site plan that's drawn in compliance with the site plan review standards needs to be submitted as part of this. The applicant uh, in the materials, uh, or his materials, just stated that there was a site plan done and gave the site, and I think it was done a few years back, um, so that if they were going to proceed on this basis, um, I guess it's my feeling they would probably have to come up with a, a, a relatively complete site plan which showed just about everything that was required for a normal site plan application. <coughs> I felt the developer's financial ability wasn't uh, applicable at this point in time since they're really not constructing anything that you're dealing with a, an existing uh, structure, existing parking lot, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. The last two items deal with some of the other requirements that apply to any sorts of changes to either the zoning map or the zoning, uh, uh, zoning ordinances text itself, which deals with statements regarding consistency with the conference of plan, in terms of what they're pr proposing, statement regarding consistency with uh, 1912, which really deals with the general purpose. Um, it's on page, you know, page one of the zoning ordinance, um, general health, safety, welfare, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. the, um, the ordinance also requires a statement regarding neighborhood compatibility and adverse effect on adjacent property values of the, of the proposal. And, it, and so those, those items haven't been addressed uh, along with the site plan. So. Mm -hmm. And though I just want to point out those last two items are, you know, they're in there. They're not specifically stated as, as they are on page 52, but again, they are statements that the boards asked for in the past 
and they, they seem to be, you know, in essence, asked for. You know, the applicants, one way or another, have to address those issues about consistency with the conference plan and things right. of this nature. But in terms of uh, substantive issues, this is pretty well. Can I say that this is pretty well complete in terms of substantive issues? And this one, I'm. To find this one, it's tough for me to differentiate between substantive and okay. some others. Um, well, maybe I'm I not sure I would make that statement. Okay, I, mean, I, I have a comment on proposal number two, um, which it seems like the simplest way to to, uh, to affect this change. But I really think that uh, seeing that the term is used so loosely nowadays, um, the term professional, that I think if we're not careful in defining that term, we could back ourselves into a business zone just mm -hmm. by changing that word and have it by uh, fiat. And I don't think that's what we really want to do. So I think if proposal number two is going to fly, from my perspective, it would need to be uh, either spelled out what is looking for, you know, legal, engineering, management consultant, whatever ones you're going to really allow, or uh, define professional a little bit better, uh, or define it in one sense. So uh, it, would, it would seem to me, as a citizen, uh, that that would also apply to the business C, which lists professional as one of the things there, mm -hmm. that uh, that the the whole code should be consistent in defining what that professional mm -hmm. is. And I, uh, that's a reasonable challenge. I'm not going to do it tonight. Steve, is, that, is there any guidance for us on this uh, in terms I, of... I uh, think there are you know, several other... Uh, there's numerous other zoning ordinances, and I'm sure somewhere at least one of the communities to find professional offices. So I think, you know, that I don't, think we, I don't think we have to create something on, you know, brand new here. Wait. No. I, no. I would think it would be favorable to have one proposal put forward mm -hmm. and explicitly submitted to mm -hmm. us yeah. with, as Mr. Mills suggests, uh, some research perhaps done on the, the definition of professional mm -hmm. and then, then we can put it to public hearing and go through the process, which involves a public hearing before the mm -hmm. planning board and then also, unfortunately, another public hearing before well, the town council. council. Mm -hmm. right. But I think we need to have that, that uh, proposal right. singularly Agreed. presented. I think that's important, especially given the fact that here, if that change was made, it would apply not only to the applicant before us, but to any That's right. Right. any land, any parcels, any buildings, and any RC zone in the community. So. Good. Any other comments by members of the board or questions by the applicant? Uh, my, my question is if, if we work with a try to dig out a definition, either borrowing it plagiarizing it from someone else mm -hmm. or working with uh, Mr. Butler to come up with something. Um, does this seem like the more reasonable way to go? I, it, to me it does. Again, as a citizen, I, I, the concept of spot zoning, of changing this to business C, um, I'm a little less comfortable with that than I am with this. But does that a, do I get a tenor? I'm, I'm looking for feedback. Mm -hmm. I know you can't predict yourself. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> It looks like the briefest part of all the proposals, brief. which is all so that's that's helpful. <laughs> Brevity is, is very helpful. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess um, you have your work cut out for you. Yes. If, if, if we were, let me, can I ask a question, please? Sure. Um, would, would such a change, should we address the issue of Consistency, consistency with a comprehensive plan. I assume that does not yes. apply if we just change this phrase. No. If we change the phrase, we address the yes. comprehensive plan as well. Yep. On, on page okay. 51 of the zoning ordinance, you can see what the items that have to be done. And that those, those three items really pertain to amendments to the text or the zoning map. So you have to deal with consistency with the comprehensive plan, consistency okay. with the purposes of the zoning ordinance, that would be it. The compatibility issue doesn't, doesn't apply. Thank you. Anything else? Well, we thank you, Doc. Uh, um, well, um, this is not a public hearing. Is, is it important? All right. Sure. 
Sure, step right up, ma'am. Go ahead. My name's Catherine Oliver, and I live at 152 Sperling. And my concern is, uh, if I understand correctly, it's now uh, zoned as residency. And what is the uh, change going to be? Madam Chairman, if I may. Go ahead, Steve. I think right now what the, what the applicant would be asking for is to change to the zoning ordinance itself that would allow professional offices in any residency zone. So any, any area of the town that's zoned RC would be permitted to have a professional office building as long as it went through site plan review by the planning board. In other words, my house could be turned into a professional uh, residence? Yes. And that would be considered in uh, commercial then? Would that be considered con commercial business? Well. How is it going to affect our property? It, that, those are some of the issues that I think the planning board would be looking at. I think that's why the definition issue was raised, yeah. exactly, for that mm -hmm. reason. You know, well, we, like we, need, we need to be clear on what that term really means so that we are not opening up a Pandora's box here. Uh, right. We, we just bought a house there, and we thought we were buying in a residential uh, district. And, of course, we don't object to the professional building, but for the future of the whatever might go in there, it could be a seven-day-a-week thing or a five-day-a-week thing. You know, it could be an ongoing thing, which I wouldn't be very happy with, and I'm sure the rest of our neighbors wouldn't be happy either. I can understand. And welcome to Cape Elizabeth. Oh, you're you're you. a new resident well, here. Well, I'm here two years now. Well, I hope you'll be very happy, and I would just like to assure you that this is just an idea at this point. It comes before us. There are many public hearings. Many changes will be made. And what happens here is merely a recommendation that goes to the town council, and then it starts all over again, more public hearing. So I certainly wouldn't be concerned at this particular point in time. It's, it certainly is in its infancy. So well, I, I think you wanted, should. I just wanted to get on the ground floor before it got, you know, all through of before you get. Well, I think the sense of, of what people would be, the, the sense of what people would be considering is, is there some minor word change that can be made so that uh, things are allowed only like what's allowed now uh, if you allow a, a, a doctor's office uh, in a residence area, you know, should you allow a CPA to be there. I don't think anybody's considering uh, opening up residential areas to business in general. So it would be kind of an attempt to make things consistent with what's here, but to clarify what additional uses would be allowed other than dental and medical. Right. And it's a long ways from happening. Mm -hmm. But what I was thinking, too, Maxwell's, you know, might have opened the door for commercialism there, so I uh, just wanted to make sure what was going on here. That's why I'm here tonight. And I'll certainly attend the future meetings and follow well, this along. Thank you. We will welcome you here, and I would like to assure you that what happened um, on the Maxwell prop, uh, property is a totally different ordinance relating to fishermen and farmers. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I, I don't think that that has anything to do with and itself. And the stables have the same classification also? Well, I, I'm not an expert on the zoning ordinance. Well, I don't it's all right there, you know, all the property is mm -hmm. right on there, so. Well, we thank you, and I hope you'll be very happy in your new home, and I wouldn't be concerned at this point in time. Madam Chairman, yes. could I ask uh, the planner, do, do we send out notices to the abutters of this particular building uh, at this point? Did we, the, um, do we have to? Or? I think, I'm trying to think, I think for this one perhaps um, these neighbors could help us. I think this time we did send out a notice because one of the aspects was a zone change, and I see a notice. Um, the, as you remember, the new planning board rules and regs say the first time something's on the agenda, you should send it out to people within, you know, in the surrounding area. We did that. Uh, the question is going to 
question that arises concerning if, if the proposal then is honed down. I mean, we send out the notice once, and that's pretty much it until the public hearing. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see um, what sort of public hearing notice we're going to have to provide. Well, we would have to have a public hearing yes. ultimately, so certainly they would all get notices about that. But I'm. We, yeah, I would say though, definitely look in the paper for notices, and then we'll see what happens elsewhere because this. Because this proposal doesn't just affect this applicant, it affects anybody in an RC zone, anybody within X number of feet of an RC zone, and uh, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to deal with that notice requirement. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, anything well, else on this? Paul Revere on his horse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll we'll um, go as quickly as possible on other business. Um, we would like to review some proposed cha changes to the planning board rules and regulations which were not clear um, uh, in the area of a conflict of interest. So Steve, um, could you read to us what you have proposed um, as a change so that we can send it to the town council and clear up this confusion? Okay. I sent out a memo to, that I drafted up to that kind of conform to uh, some language that um, Chairman Guthrie and I talked about, and then which you received before in your package. And tonight there is a letter from Tom Leahy dated August 15th, which was faxed over mere hours ago that, uh, that kind of comments on that. The basic idea of my memo was to kind of get to the, the concerns that the board had about how, how the board is, as a whole deals with conflicts of interest. My language was try to try to differentiate between a planning board member, him or herself, raising the issue of a conflict of interest versus somebody else raising it, and the whole issue of whether or not if somebody feels that they have a conflict of interest, if there needs to be a discussion and a vote, or if you can just say, I think I have a conflict of interest, and therefore, and so I, I put that in, I put the phrase or the appearance of a conflict conflict of interest, thinking that if, you know, going back to if the board member, him or herself, feels that they have a, there's an appearance of a conflict, that they, that can be a reason for abstaining. Tom Leahy's letter thinks that that's strict and might be, um, is perhaps too strict and, and might be viewed as kind of requiring, requiring a board member to withdraw. And that wasn't my intent, but Tom has some other language which he offers, I think, for that first sentence, which reads that uh, if a planning board member has a conflict of interest, he or she shall refrain from participating and voting on the matter involved. It's kind of that first, you know, as a replacement for the first sentence. Mm -hmm. It's kind of alternative, and so maybe it eliminates that, that potential future conflict uh, about what's, what's the difference between a real conflict of interest versus the appearance. Mm -hmm. Any comments? I Questions? Think, I think that uh, Tom's approach is, uh, is the appropriate one. I, I think it ought to be understood that if at any time a member feels uncomfortable, um, be, they can abstain on, on the basis that you did, Marion, because mm -hmm. a conflict of interest, um, I think you know, absent a definition, isn't a feeling that your your judgment may be uh, less than objective. You know, if, if a good friend of yours is sitting out there, just as, as you had that situation, uh, I don't think it's conflict of interest to mm. act on their behalf, because I think a conflict of interest is when you have an interest, when when you could benefit from something. Uh, we're really talking, I think, more about uh, um, whether or not you're, you're biased. Right. Uh, and so I guess I, I'm only saying that so that we understand that, that everybody always has the right to say, I'm not sure I can remain objective on this because right. of my relationship or because I hate the guy, whatever else. And I don't think that's a conflict of interest. Yeah, and I think the mm. caution is really uh, worthwhile here because as you live in a town for a longer and longer period of time, hopefully if you, as long as you're not a hermit, you get to know an awful lot of people, and if you started to say, I'm going to abstain because I feel close to somebody, then you may not be able to act on the planning board at all. So I, I think there's got to be some 
some judgment, and I, and, I, and I think the pecuniary interest part of it, I think, is one of the clearest right. examples yeah. of a conflict of interest. So I think that's probably where we have to hang our hat. I yeah. like Tom's interpretation yeah, of this. Yeah. I think um, that, as uh, Ivan says, we the longer we live here, the more uh, we do get to know people. And unless we're absolutely appreciating some uh, fiduciary uh, right. benefit or <laughs> very direct benefit. I think that's the basis right. on which we declare. declare it. I agree. Okay. So, Ma Madam Chairman, yes. then if, if we use Tom's sentence in replacement of the first sentence in my memo mm -hmm. and then kept the rest, would that yeah, be appropriate? That or, would be yeah. appropriate because then that would straighten out the other problem we had about the not understanding who would vote and who wouldn't vote. Right. Okay. So would you like me to sure, would you do that up? And, it? Okay. Would so, you reread it and we'll vote on that and then uh, we'll send it to the town council for their okay. approval. Shall I read just the the first part of that mm -hmm. section? Or do you want sure, me to it would go fast. Okay. So number four in the um, in subsection three sub A, um, four would then now read or would is recommended to read if a planning board member has a conflict of interest, he or she shall refrain from participating in voting on the matter involved. If a question of a possible conflict of interest is raised by another planning board member, an applicant, or any other interested party, the board after discussion will determine by a majority vote if a conflict exists. Good. And then the same the rest would be the, the rest same. The rest is the same. Very good. Um, any discussion about that? Do we need um, I, th I think procedurally we I need think a, we need a vote to have a to vote, to right? Send out the town council. Uh, how many are in favor of sending that the language just read by Steve to the town council? Say aye or raise your right hand. <laughs> okay. Unanimous again. We voted unanimously this this entire night. <laughs> Because it's hot. Um, I know, area. and we I want was, to go home. I was not taking a nap when Steve couldn't find me. I was on the phone in the that's corner amazing. conducting some business. That's <laughs> quite all right. Um, the last thing on the agenda, so we, I won't be keeping you, um, the setting of the September 5th Planning Board Workshop on daycare. Uh, I'd like to inform you that the um, Town Council has uh, given us an extension until March first on the shoreland zoning issue. I don't know if that's enough time, but that is the extension. I, I will find out more about that. And um, I have asked the zoning board who, to meet with us, uh, so a representative will be coming on September 5th from the zoning board, but then I heard what you had to say tonight. And if you feel, uh, Ivan, that um, meeting with the town manager um, is a priority, I would be happy to be that flexible be, about this. Doesn't, I don't think it has to be at the next meeting necessarily, and I don't think it has to be a long meeting. I, no. I think that uh, all Mike asked for was to be uh, to be invited to our next uh, workshop to just discuss the issue. Right. I wouldn't imagine it would be anything that would take up the entire workshop. Right. So if we had it, um, Mike, if he could come and meet with us on September 5th yeah. at 7 o'clock, we could invite the zoning board to meet with us at 7.30. I would think that would be more than ample time. Is that the Good. first day of school or the day It's the day the after Tuesday. Labor Day, I guess. No, first day of school, I think. Isn't right. Tuesday the fifth? Yes. Mm -hmm. so it's, right it's, after Labor Day. The day after. You know, Mary, when, when you do ask Mike to come, it might be worthwhile to, to tell him that when he does come, it would be worthwhile to discuss with the board what are the contractual relationships we have with our engineer mm -hmm. or a lawyer or a player. What right. Are no, no, it's come prepared to educate us. Well, I would be delighted to be educated, and I think that you raised a very good point. Um, we really don't know so many things. Also, I think we should be enlightened about the budget as it relates right. to this. Right, exactly. absolutely. We, we used to, I think, in fact, yeah. even have a budget right. that we had to approve right. in my very early <laughs> I know days it. on the board. We should know more about the budget. I think we should just know more about a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, if we, if we have money, you know, if we're making statements and committing to power funds, it's helpful. Thank you, Ms. Aaron and Alice and myself. The council was pleased that we wanted, uh, and, and that's an important issue because we sort of slipped a little bit in mm -hmm. hiring somebody.
charging the applicant for it. Yeah. We don't do it much. Right. So I don't know what, because the money isn't there. We were at what? Every time they come in with the three experts, I don't know if it's like the one time. It appears as though the escrow account fees were never established by the town council. No, not that I believe. A small amount that they. I don't think so. I mean, we're still investigating. I thought that was done, and we haven't been able to find that. So we're trying to track that down. We're in poverty. We're in poverty. I wouldn't go there. You don't have the escrow fee money at least that you could. The answer is we we spend what we have to spend until they give us. Yeah. Madam Chairman, could I also ask what the status is? And I hate to be so sound like a broken record on the wetlands ordinance and the map and all the. Where are we, Steve? You you might want to. Sure. We were we had a meeting that was tentatively scheduled, I think, for August 10th or so, and turned out turns out of the town council ordinance committee, they invited invited representatives from the conservation commission, planning board, Dr. Rand himself, and it turns out that everybody that was invited couldn't make it. They were all out of town, including myself. So we rescheduled it for I believe September 15th. Now just double check that. I think it was September 15th. Never wrote that down. No, it's not not something. No, it's not. Okay, no, it's um September 12th. Oh, September 12th. September 12th, which is a Tuesday, at 4:45. And Mary, I'm not sure who you were suggesting attend from the planning board. Well, I had asked if Alice could please attend because of her close association with this ordinance. If you possibly can, Alice, you're much more conversant with it than I am. That that looks. Does that look all right? Yes, it does. Good. And of course, the conservation commission would be invited as well. And so that'll the timing will give maybe myself or Alice an opportunity to update the planning board at the next regular scheduled meeting. And does the town council now have the revisions to draft 16A with the cover letter? Yes. And you all should have received a copy of that cover memo, which was sent. So they all have it in there. At that first meeting, they haven't discussed it. As far as I know, they haven't discussed it as an ordinance committee. They wanted to save it for that first meeting when everybody got together, so they could be apprised of the background, everything that went into it. And so if they had questions, it'd be right there. The map would be there. So all those concerns could be dealt with up front versus a lot of misunderstandings perhaps occurring right from the very beginning. Right. Any other questions or comment? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Thank you all for coming tonight on a hot evening like this. And good night, and thank you for tuning in to the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. That's not too bad.